Welcome to the Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today. So tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week is a very special episode of the Keel Hauled Podcast. We are closing in on episode 250. And while I don't really have anything special, it's just a fun number to really talk about. 250 episodes. We're getting close. We're two away. This week is a very special week because I have none other than Joby One, aka Penny D himself, joining us to talk about his career, his his life as a cosplayer. Uh, we're going to be talking about prop making. We're going to be talking about the adventure and Team Pendragon versus Team uh, Flameheart. We're going to be diving into that this week because it, it really has been a very interesting discussion to have. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of people who wanted to save Golden Sands go for Flameheart now, and it really does seem to be whatever is the most cherished thing. Like everyone seems to want to do one thing. Um, we got into talking as uh, as I kind of switch over to the conversation with uh, Joby One, and as we got into talking, I really did forget. I I earnestly forgot that we probably should have like a proper start to the podcast. So we actually ended up doing that at the end of the episode, and I put it up in the front of the episode. So um, if things feel like we jump from an introduction into casually talking about Minecraft, that's kind of why. But uh, I really hope you all have an opportunity to go and check out Joby One's. Uh, content because he is a fantastic prop maker he's a professional prop maker he's also a cosplayer and he's a big fan of a lot of the same stuff that i am too so hopefully if you like what i like and uh and you're listening to this podcast because of you you enjoy the stuff that i like um then you'll probably like listening and watching his content as well too and he's even putting up some of that stuff up for sale too which is kind of awesome especially if you're a collector of sea of Thieves props so uh let's give this a good listen to but before i get into that i have to thank the patrons if you would like to join the patron list, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com forward slash keelhauled podcast and support this content just like these fine fellow folks have. I want to thank, starting off at the very top as always, People's Republic, L Cute, Balls, Bam Bam Bagel, Captain Hasco, Captain Hayes, Chateau Neuf, Zombie Killer, Cloud, Cosmic Johnson, Static Mirror, Davram TV, El Jefe Esteban, Fergatron, Trickster, Jabaro5, Carl Embo, Kazia the Rogue, Lumpy SRQ, Dub Dub Goose, Evil Morpheus, Xbox Mike 29, Murphy Lives, Mutinous Max, Raja the Brave, Registella, Replicated Flame, Rustbell Kid, Norwegian, Skamelt 666, Sudesh, Captain Dasm, That Kilted Guy, TN Professor, Real Big Tuna, Big Bad Pad, Super Pack, Mina Fairy, Music Me, The Lord Chronologist, Dead Eye Dre, Heger Owl, Ghost Boy 20, Evil Martha, Peter Miller, Rooski Doo, Skinny Matt, Thor Von Blitz, Windsor Chris, and Zam Wow. Thank you all so much for your support. Uh, if you're not in the captain tier, I still appreciate the uh, support that you're giving each and every month. It really does mean the world to me. And I, I love that you guys are happy with the content. And, uh, feel like you can support it if you're not part of this group no worries there's always opportunity if not just share it with other people uh the youtube feel free to like and subscribe that helps the algorithms um or just tell people about it if you're fantasy thieves and you listen to podcasts um and you know people that are as well this is a great way to help support me and the content that i'm making thanks <laughs> Joby is is joining us this episode um, for for Keel Hall. Uh, he has been a part of the community for a very long time. Um, has been making a lot of just props, uh, different items in in Sea of Thieves. He's a prop crafter, uh, a creator, and a streamer for the most part. But has been playing Sea of Thieves for a long time. Um, let's i, I kind of want to get folks uh, an idea of where they can go to actually get your content so first off before we even get the introduction welcome how are you doing i'm very well thank you awesome thank you for joining me um where can uh people go to actually check out some of these these props that you've been making okay so uh a lot of my content comes from twitch so very much like other members of the sea of thieves creator crew i do play sea of thieves so i've been enjoying the game since it released i think i started playing in the uh the second week 
uh, once uh, see if he's was on. So I was, I was out of the country for the first week, so that's my excuse. Um, <laughs> But uh, as well as playing CFEs and being part of the creator crew, um, I also do uh, cosplay and prop making. So um, a lot of my content, uh, I'd say about a, a 50-50 split, is uh, playing CFEs, but then also doing makers and crafting. So I make handmade physical props. Um, and I go through the entire process of what I do from start to finish. And it's kind of almost like a learning process for people who want to learn it. And then it's quite a chilled out environment as well. So we just chat and we listen to music. Um, but I go through these projects and it's been ongoing since the second anniversary of CFEs. And what I've done essentially is go through the history of CFEs and recreate items that represent updates that have uh, kind of arrived along the way. Um, and then when I'm done with them, I I put them up on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I do have a TikTok as well, which is not super active when it comes to see if you related stuff. But um, yeah, if if you want to kind of find me, it's it's just Joby One, literally everywhere. So that's Twitch, Instagram, and, and Twitter. Um, but yeah, we've kind of been on a journey, um, and this is going to kind of echo throughout our conversation i think it's just kind of see if users evolved over time and as a creator who's kind of come on to see if it was the first game that i streamed um i kind of wanted to do something that kind of represented me as an individual and kind of what i can do with my talents mm -hmm. and i decided to do something as a little kind of celebration a CFU second anniversary and it was a simple project um I wanted to make a quest item. So you look at your captain's table and you put down your voyage of what you're going to do. And I thought, yeah, let's do a quest. We're going to put a dagger in it. We're going to stab it. And then we'll scatter some coins around. Um, and then that project evolved um, into something much larger and has been ongoing for the past two and a half years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane to see kind of your journey uh, of all the stuff that you've created and all the different things and it was such a such a fantastic opportunity to get you to meet you at sot fest and, and get to see you in full pen dragon regalia it was it was a, a amazing treat and everyone was just so excited to actually get to to see you walking around as pen dragon it was such a fantastic moment which really makes me wonder how come they're so apt to uh to uh, saving flameheart at this point i just don't understand it after meeting you it seems insane that they would want to fight for flameheart at this point your content um, is definitely content that i think a lot of people would get a kick out of especially when you're when you're doing your maker creator stuff um because it's such a fascinating thing watching you take essentially what is just like a bunch of foam pads that are typically used for like equipment uh for mm -hmm. workout equipment stuff and using those to actually like trim down shave glue together you know, all the things you know paint making those into objects that we kind of just only ever see in game but you get to actually physically see it touch it hold it all that cool stuff like the the the, the sea crest or i don't even know what they would call them what do they call the plaque that's on the, uh, the ship crest ship crest, yeah, yeah, ship yeah. crest. Yeah, yeah. um seeing those things like come to life is fascinating to me i i love watching the process of that um but it's it's cool to actually get to sit down and actually see you sail uh just kind of out in the seas normally from time to time yeah it's it's, it's nice I, like, i've definitely found that balance or I'm, I'm finding the balance better um of just kind of having time to relax and play and enjoy the game and then the crafting stuff is it's not work but there's definitely a lot more mind power that goes into that kind of thing it's not something that i can super relax into there's always something to work out kind of figure out how something works three-dimensionally uh, three -dimensionally, and um, kind of break that down so I can kind of try and make it a reality. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to have the option that if I don't feel like just crafting or if I don't feel like just sailing, I can, I can flip it around the other way. And yeah. Yeah, that people can come in and have a nice relaxing time. Like, it, it means a lot. Like, I'm, I'm definitely smaller as, as far as some CFU's creators go, and it's... it's um like going to see a feast fest and, and meeting people like to have kind of the reputation that i do is extremely flattering 
um, as someone who's not particularly confident in any in any aspect of what I do, just to have that little bit of affirmation and the fact that people want to come in and just sit around and listen to me waffle on while I try and bumble through a project is it's very flattering. <laughs> it's definitely a different it's it's a totally different mindset you get like a crew that you actually get to work with and they can pick up the slack if things are going uh if if, if you need like a mental break or something but it's it's when you're making it's all you all the time you don't really get an opportunity to to really take a break unless you actually think of like oh i need to make sure i'm taking a break right now yeah yeah it's definitely something i'm guilty of is just overrunning overworking a little bit but I, i'll always come back to it and i'm going to keep going as as long as i can <laughs> well it's fantastic work um we're going to be jumping into the rest of the episode here uh so definitely stick around and uh get, we're, we're going to be done we're going to be going through a whole bunch of stuff especially your history with cosplaying because i think that's a a very interesting thing that uh folks are going to get a kick out of especially especially some of the things that you've done in in your past awesome like, yeah and yeah I've, I've just been sat most of the day playing minecraft to be honest i went out <laughs> and did a quick bit of shopping but yeah, i'm getting heavily back into minecraft it's just one of those games where you can just sit and do not a lot for a lot of hours <laughs> that's what i'm told i've never i've never been able to get into minecraft um for whatever reason i don't know why i get to the point where like i build a house or at least mm -hmm. what I can call what what I call a house. It's, it's probably yeah. like maybe half a shack to most people. Uh, <laughs> and and I start digging, and then I get digging, and I get digging, and I get digging, and then by the time I get done digging, I'm like, "Whew, that's a lot of work. What can I do?" And then I go back up to the top, and I look at my workshop, and I'm like, "I I don't know what I can do. What do I do?" <laughs> I dug, <laughs> I built a house. Yeah. <sighs> I'm kind of I'm kind of the opposite. I have all these big ideas, and then I go in with really good intentions, and then I just kind of, uh, well, as with most aspects of what I do, I, I have these big ideas, which then are, are really difficult to just kind of follow through on, and then you just get kind of lost in the scale of stuff. So at the moment, um, you're a Zelda fan, right? Yeah. You play, yeah. So I'm. I want to build Ocarina of Time's uh, Castle Town. Ooh. So that that is the current project so i'm like imagining that outside of the main gates you're gonna have a bit of the field and yeah stuff like that and kind of got to level out that ground uh, and then you've got obviously got the big gates and the drawbridges and the walls and then you go in and then you've got the houses going down the side and then you come to the market square and i'm just oh. uh, the amount of time i'm just stood and i'm like looking around it's it's that john Travol travolta gif and he's like he's, he's looking side to side it's like where do i like where do i begin what am i meant to do so i'm gathering resources and biding my time and ascent like eventually i'll get the bulk of the build done the, the main gate's looking all right that's, that's crazy that's pretty much there that's really cool but, yeah i always have these big ideas and it's just the scale of them is uh I feel it's an like undertaking. Th that is like a that's like a huge mood, man. Like the the number of folks that I talk to on a regular basis that have big plans but never follow through on them. I think it really does come down to like the scale of the prospect that you have for mm -hmm. this idea is so big that it's so it's so overwhelming to try and like break down like little bits how to get started yeah. really and and that's kind of so that's and it's funny too because i mean you've been doing builds for sea of thieves for mm -hmm. a while now so like to me that seems like the same boat um like you, it is. you exactly <laughs> how do you how does it start off like how do you even get started with because i imagine it probably starts off with an idea right like you have an idea of what you want to build but how do you decide on like what materials to go for how do you decide like what scale even to make it at so with most of my stuff i, I go with what i know and mm -hmm. i think that's the best way i've kind of had 14 years experience with cosplay mm. so i've obviously adapted my materials over time and found things that work better but i've kind of taught myself everything through trial and error so i have my own particular way of doing things and yeah when it comes to a project i do i do break it down to those kind of various essentials it's like is this actually possible as a build what am I going to need to be able to do it? Like I, I look through the materials that I have. I think about what I could get my hands on easily and kind of almost yeah. what I have lends itself into what I can actually 
allow myself to think of doing. So, like, I know I'm not going to be able to build a full scale Megalodon, which is a <laughs> slight running joke in people that come into my Twitch stream. So, I'm <laughs> like, well, if you want to hire me a warehouse and a workshop and pay for the materials, I could do it. But at the moment, I work in my bedroom with about a meter workspace. Oh so, I, I'm very limited as what I could do. So, like, yeah, it's just kind of finding the point at which you think, yeah, that's maybe a bit too much yeah. or not feasible. But then there are some things that you just got to try out and if they work, they work. Have you ever thought about just doing like the jaw of a Megalodon to scale? Like, you know, maybe like a headboard for your bed or something? <laughs> just tossing that out there. I'm not sure if uh, the wife would appreciate <laughs> that one. But um, I mean, I, I've done the, the drum of the deep and that's got the, the shark's jaw around yeah. it. So... I have, oh, so like, cool. I've obviously seen the one that's in the tavern in uh, mm -hmm. the Sea of Thieves uh, uh, news tavern, and I'm like, well, that has been done, and I kind of I, I like tackling things that people haven't done or people do less or are less inclined to do, because mm. uh, then it's it's kind of branching out to just stuff that's that maybe people haven't seen yet. Yeah, but everybody's seen the big shark's jaw, so like, yeah. if I was to do it, yeah. like, not that I don't mind doing the same thing, but it's nice to have something that's different. You got your eye on anything right now? As as in as in future projects? Yeah. I mean, there's there's a list as far as I can see. Um, <laughs> um yeah, there's there's always a project. Uh and I say a project, there are multiple projects that are on the go at any one time. Mm -hmm. So to actually the challenge for me is scaling down the amount of what I'm doing so I can actually manage one project at a time. This is this is a new revelation to me after over two years of doing this mm -hmm. continuous Sea of Thieves project. But as I, I can look around my room right now, I have the Smuggler's Fortune builds, which I started last November. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, oh, wow. But it's, it's not that they've been worked on solidly that whole time, but yeah. I have those projects at the moment. Yeah. I have the Chest of Thousand Grogs. I do have a uh, Hat of Unfeasibly Good Fame, which is half built. Uh, I have a bunch of coins and pendants. And all these things, and everything kind of overlaps, and it gets to the point where you get lost in the amount that you need to do it. It's like it's exactly the same thing with Minecraft. Like it's it's no way you can place your energy yeah. at that time and feel you can get something out of it. Yeah, uh, that's productive. And yeah, sometimes you completely hit that block, and I've had that over yeah. and over. But yeah, at least in Minecraft, you can physically hit the block <laughs> to some Break extent. The wall. Yeah. I'm curious because you had mentioned that you'd been doing cosplay for 14 years. Like that's, that's a long time, buddy, to be doing cosplay. How did yeah. you even get started with that? Uh, so uh, fancy dress was always a thing. I, I don't know what, what you, would you call it fancy dress where you are? Uh, no. Bas basically costuming. Um, basically if it's not, like, I, I learned about cosplay when I went to Comic-Con mm -hmm. for the very first time. Um, and what like at Halloween? What would you call it? Like when you get into your costume? Uh, just dressing up, I guess. Just dressing up. So we'll that's... call it dressing up. So like as <laughs> I a, like as fancy a kid, dress I mean, though. That's crazy. Yeah, fancy dress is very much. It's pretty oh. UK way of saying it. Um, even though it's kind of it alludes to just dressing up fancy instead of something else. Um, but yeah, I'd kind of always done Halloween stuff, and if there's like birthday parties, like. If you had the opportunity to, to make something, like I've always been creative and arty, like mm -hmm. that's just kind of one of my drives. And then I went to university, and in my first year of uh, uni, my friend invited me to uh, a Comic Con in London. I'd never been to one before. But obviously, you see them all in uh, in movies and on TV and stuff. You're like, yeah, Comic Con yeah. looks amazing in the States. Like, that's, I want to go check that out. And um, I'm a big Zelda fan, so I, I made a Link costume. Uh, and on the first day I went, I traveled all the way from my home in kind of the middle south of England, all the way to London on the coach, traveled across London on the tube in costume, did the day at Comic-Con. Like I, I went the whole way <laughs> in character <laughs> and great. it was, I'll never do it again, <laughs> oh, no? but I will. No, it's like, it's obviously a bit, you get some funny looks when you're on a coach from, uh, a small town in the south of England, uh, <laughs> dressed as a, a kind of fairy guy. But um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of, it kickstarted everything. It kind of connected with 
my need to create stuff, but also that kind of geeky side of me, which never had that outlet before growing up. Can you very obviously everybody knows this? Like you, you, you're very gated as a as a geeky nerdy person. There's not much you can do, but when you find that mm-hmm. community, like it completely drives you. And then yeah, I've kind of never stepped oh, yeah. away from it. So from my um late teens to my early 30s i'm doing exactly the same thing <laughs> as i was doing um That's yeah all funny. the way through but then it's it's led me to some really cool places uh both work wise and socially and yeah I, I wouldn't wouldn't change a thing well you i mean one of the first things i learned about you when when i first kind of found out who like who you are and what you've been doing is that you'd actually gotten to work on uh the the is it a snake or is it a worm it's start. a snake so yes okay. it's a, i was pretty sure it was a snake <laughs> i've heard people t- tell me it's a worm and i'm like you're wrong yeah, it's a snake That's disrespectful <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, yeah so so like how did you even land the job working for lucas films in this case very very fortunately like i've i've had some amazing luck and like and that's me <laughs> i shouldn't i shouldn't just say it's luck obviously i can i know what i'm doing <laughs> enough that it is recognized by other people and they think that's good enough to, for me to have a job um but i have been fortunate with uh both people that i've known and been able to be in contact with and then had some great opportunities come up because of that um and basically one of my kind of lifelong friends or well not lifelong but i've known them half my life actually since the second comic con i ever went to um but their sister had been in the film industry for for years um and they were in hair and makeup and they had been working on star wars films for since uh because uh, was it force awakens since mm. the force awakens came out they had been on on board I love that movie. and yeah it's they're great. They are, they are very enjoyable films. I know they've got a lot of issues, and people will pick fault with them as as long as the day is. But um, yeah, they they are enjoyable. And yeah, I, yeah, I have no actually, no qualms telling sorry, people again. what's what's wrong or right about those films. But I I still one hundred percent will watch them whenever I can if if that's a possibility. Because yeah. how often do we get good Star Wars? Well, aside from Andor right now. I mean, I I think Andor is actually outdoing everything it really has come out from star wars <laughs> like in in the last decade um yeah and or is peak at the moment and people are complaining that it's slow uh, but i've it's... i stand by that it, it is a slow burn but it is burning like everything is important in that show yeah uh, and i don't i don't think they've missed a beat well, um can we, yeah, can, uh... can we tangent real quick I don't know. Yeah, sure. I just and the only reason I want to is just because like last night I I was fighting a migraine and uh, I took a nap and when I woke up my wife and I sat down and we watched a few episodes and we just barely started it out, so we're mm-hmm. in like episode three and okay. some of the stuff that happens in that I looked at my wife and I was like this is the third episode, <laughs> what are they how do they even go on from this feels like the finale this is insane. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, it's it's nuts, but I'm, oh my God, I'm enjoying it. But anyway, sorry, I, I had to get that on no, that's fine. to someone because I'm still gushing in my mind about it. No, it's, it's such a good show. I'm sure we'll come back to it. Um, <laughs> but Rise, yeah, of, Rise really of Skywalker. It. Rise of Skywalker. So yeah, as, as far as lots of fans are concerned, it's, it's not their favorites, but to actually be able to be on the set and construct something that's actually visible on screen and be a part of Star Wars history, no matter kind of how the legacy of those films is going to be like, that could be a big turnaround, but I like, I was massively privileged. Like it was crazy. So yeah. Um, but basically the story was that my friend who was in hair and makeup, who was basically working on the, the Chewbacca suits, that was mm. their job. So they would, uh, construct them kind of, you know, there's a process called knotting. Yeah. And that's when you sew the hairs into either the wig or, um, real tedious like, work. Yeah, it's it's a long old process. I had a little go, so I did put some hairs into a chewy suit as well, so I can oh, nice. I can claim that. Um, <laughs> but my my cosplay work was actually kind of the reason why I got into that. Um, and my friend, when they were in working on Force Awakens, like back in twenty fourteen, they were like, "You need to send a CV in here and a portfolio. You do well." And I, I put it off, mm. and I was like, "I'm not, I'm not I'm not ready for that." Like I kind of mess about with stuff in my bedroom i go to comic cons like that's not i'm not on that level and i, I definitely i didn't feel ready in myself and in some ways i still don't um 
I, I, I kind of feel like I've tricked my way in. That's Sorry, okay. That's everyone. I guarantee you that is everyone. Any anyone that has good success in life has that that exact feeling. Like they they weren't ready. They jumped in. They got lucky. And and what was it? Phil Spencer was just doing it. He's like, be passionate. Follow your dreams. And when opportunity knocks, jump in full, full for it. I'm telling you, man, you, you don't think you're ready. Yeah. I think you're ready. Looking at your stuff. I think you're ready. That's, that's very kind. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there's always that self-doubt. And even though I've been there and I've done it, I, I still have those doubts. And it's, it's kind of, it is having that fear of someone saying no. But that like, mm -hmm. ultimately, that's the worst thing that someone can say. Like, there's nothing worse that's going to come of it. It's just not yeah. this time um but at the same time you don't want that kind of mm -hmm. projection um but yeah so I, I ultimately it came to the rise of skywalker being in production and i sent my portfolio in actually no i didn't that's a lie uh, i sent it to my friend and i was like can you check over this mm -hmm. can you just see if there's anything that you would take out or adapt and i've written this little cover letter can you just check it over and see if there's anything that I can alter. And they're like, I've given it to my boss. <laughs> They'll be emailing you soon. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> so I get this email and they're like, uh, they get me on a phone call and they're like, yeah, we'd love you to come in, come down to the studio, have a chat. Uh, and this is like within a space of a week, I go down to Pinewood Studios near London. I have this sitting interview. It's just like casual. It's just in a coffee shop. I have my portfolio out on the table mm. and my my ultron suit so it's the first bit of foam work so i primarily work oh, with craft wow. foam yeah and uh i'm kind of they're leaf leafing through the the portfolio and they get to it and they're like this is cool did you did you fabricate this and i'm like yeah i did and they're like who did the art finish and i so what's the art finish and this is how kind of unprofessional i was at that time <laughs> they're like who, who painted it and i'm like I, I painted it. I did everything from start to finish. And they're like, can I take this? I'm like, sure. Uh, so they <laughs> took that to Tell me it wasn't the, the original. Uh, no, I, no, I had spares. It's fine. Okay. Um, but they took that to the kind of director of the Creature Workshop. And yeah, within three days uh, of leaving, uh, I had an email inviting me to come and work and be there for, for it. they kind of put it as a a short space of time so i was, I was working a full-time job at the time and mm -hmm. i kind of had to step away from that temporarily and i kind of winged myself a couple of months to come away from that kind of with the promise of going back and that's yeah i kind of wish i didn't but it's it's those moments where you need to jump into something or just kind of i kind of took what i could get and i yeah. felt it was the best opportunity or the best option that i had so i went in for a short space of time a couple of months worked primarily on the the snake and that whole thing was practical it was 25 meters long all the scales were handcrafted out of the same stuff that i make like all of my cfe stuff out of um but it was the best experience of my life like i met childhood heroes and i met yeah kind of heroes from my adulthood with like obviously the the sequel guys as well um it was the single most greatest working experience of my life. Like I saw some amazing things. I, I I talk about it on streams now and then, and I do little little stories. There are so many little things I could I could talk for hours. It's it's something yeah. like I I don't know how to explain it. I've gotten to do hmm. I've gotten to do a couple shoots for for some indie films, and I've gotten to do a lot of theater in my in my life. And mm -hmm. there's something. There's something magical about being in a place where everyone is working towards making something entertainment value, like some sort of like entertainment. Doesn't matter what it is. You you could be making a, a a show for like a fashion show, but everyone putting their all into trying to make people believe that something that is made out of plastic is alive is yeah. is something that's fantastic. That's what I love. It's, it's the same enjoyment that I get from video games, right? Like people spend their whole day working tirelessly on trying to build something that is fake for other people just to get like an, an essence of enjoyment out of it, which is why whenever I've been, whenever I talk about games, whenever I talk about video games, I can, I can point to a game and be like, this is a badly designed game. 
or this does not look good. I can be very critical about it, but at the end of the day, I have to sit back and think about the fact that I am still playing a video game. Their intent was for me to enjoy myself. And that was their whole job. Their whole job was to try and make sure that I can enjoy myself. And there's something magical about working with people together on a project like this and, and being able to like spend time with each other and talk about, you know, what is it going to be like when all said and done? And that's, it's, it's just a, it's a fantastic moment to kind of be able to look back on and be like, I was a part of this when it happened. It was the most amazing thing that ever happened. And regardless of how people approached it or, or thought of the whole thing, nothing will ever take away that experience for me. And that is one of the coolest experience I've ever had. That's what, it's what I, it's why I decided that I was going to fly to London and go to Sotfest for a one day event halfway across the yeah. world for me, because I knew in the back of my mind, this was an opportunity for me to go to connect with the people that I have been spending the last four to five years with and finally get a chance to actually be in front of them for the first time and say hi to them and get to, to actually spend time with them and get to meet people that I only ever get to watch online. And you, you just can't take that kind of experience away from people. No, I completely agree. Like, is there are just so, some moments in life that you, you just have to be there. You do have to take that jump. So yeah, for you, it's flying across the, the sea for, a, for Sotfest. Um, yeah, like it's, I, I was so glad I was able to be there, like for the, for the long run of that event coming up. Yeah. Like that part of the way when obviously COVID was happening and, uh, obviously it's still happening. Um, but when it was, when things had to be canceled and shifted back, I was like, do I, do I keep my ticket? Do I cancel it? Do I just rebuy another one? But like, yeah, I kept it and I just left it there and I just, uh, Liz messaged me and, um, she asked what I wanted to do. I was just like, yeah, let it roll. Let's keep going. I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait. And I'm, I'm glad I did. Like, cause if I'd missed out that opportunity to be there, like, I, I, yeah, I would have been devastated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I would have been, I would have felt terrible if I, if I had the opportunity to go and I didn't take it. Um, which I, it, it kind of reminds me, it kind of takes me back because uh, we've been, we've been kind of dipping into, to, uh, costumes and stuff like that. And, um, I, I, I'm, were there any standout cosplays or, or fancy dresses that you've that you you can like look back and point at and be like these were really fantastic I really love doing these and have you ever thought about like going back to do them over again or to like see like if you should take the skills that you've learned over the last 14 years to see if you could really really punch up uh, one of the ones that you've you've done early early in your career there are definitely a couple that I, that I really enjoyed and some that got a good few outings so Ultron was a good one and it was popular obviously we've got a lot of people in the cosplay kind of area that do lots of 3d printing and you can see, go to a convention and you'll see an iron man or yeah. uh, a war machine like you're almost guaranteed to see one of those um and it's it's awesome like it's it's great to see but yeah i, I wanted to do ultron from what i was aware no one had done it yet i was working on the costume before the movie had come out i had pictures of the uh, hot toys version of their like i think it's like an eight inch yeah. model and i just had three images from that i think and then trailer shots oh and i was God. trying to formulate everything put it all together uh in a way that worked and it was really popular like, i really enjoyed it i couldn't see a thing again i, I don't have a thing <laughs> recently where i can't see anything while i'm in cosplay it's the same with pendragon um yeah. but yeah that was one that kind of yeah for the first time i'd used foam like I'd never used the material before and that was a learning process in itself. And I, I could go back to it, but then, like I said, I, I kind of like to do things that are, are different. Mm. So I think Link is one character that I have gone back to a number of times, um, being a big Legend of Zelda fan. Um, but then I will always do a different iteration of Link. So I've done a Twilight Princess. I've done a Skyward Sword. I've done a Breath of the Wild version of Link. And that is one that's kind of evolved over time. And I've revisited the Master Sword and the Hylian Shields. And they're always good fun to do. Um, so things like that, like there will be ones that kind of loop back. But lots of the time I like to do something different, something that people haven't seen before, or at least I'm doing it in a different way. Yeah. Um, 
and I think the other kind of standout with that, and it's weird and it freaks people out, is is the Star Wars one. I went to Star Wars Celebration in London. Um, I think it was 20... I want to say 2016. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was in the lead-up to Rogue One coming out, and this was the first opportunity for me as a con goer to go to a specifically Star Wars con. And I had an idea in mind. I was like, I'm going to go as... Luke and Yoda, Dagobah training, like backpack, Yoda in the backpack, <laughs> uh, uh, like lightsaber, blaster, cool, all that stuff. Yeah. But I'm going to be Yoda. So I got a mannequin torso and I cut the back end out of it and I put straps on it and I attached that to my front. I made arms for it. And then I made a li- uh, liquid latex head for Yoda that I could kind of pull over my own. Oh, man. So my legs were Luke's legs. Yeah. My torso and arms were Yoda's <laughs> torso and arms. And it looked horrendous. And the looks that I got, like, people were confused. But um, I could revisit it, and I'd love to see if I could do it better. Because mm-hmm. it was it was almost uh, space balls <laughs> levels of... Like, it was yogurt like it wasn't yoda it was it was such a monstrosity but yeah a good experience just to kind of capture people's attention in that small space of time it it was definitely one that people had seen before like they there were i think at least two luke skywalker cosplayers with a yoda in a backpack Mm -hmm. but i was the only one who was yoda (laughs) but uh (laughs) yeah it was disgusting but it was good fun oh gosh (laughs) That's great. I, I can imagine how that would look and I can <laughs> I could definitely see how that could I could go both ways. But I love the I love the I just made a, a Spaceballs reference the other night and no one got it and I was really bummed about it. But uh, yeah, what, it's, what was the reference? I was uh, I was like talking to my wife about something and she was saying something. And I can't even remember what it was, but I was like, uh, whatever she said, I took that word and I put it in place of like uh, Spaceballs, the cereal, Spaceballs, the, the <laughs> lunchbox, Spaceballs, the flamethrower. She's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go away now. I'm sorry. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have missed it. I wouldn't have missed it. It wouldn't have been wasted on me. <laughs> So I wanted to, um, I figured we, we should probably actually talk about Sea of Thieves on this Sea of Thieves podcast. I could go sure. on for hours about freaking Legend of Zelda any day. Um, but I figured I wanted to, to hit up kind of the, the current adventure because uh, mm-hmm. this is the first time I think I'm, I'm truly conflicted. Like when, when we got the, uh, when we got the, the first kind of community decision for like destroy golden sands or save golden sands, I was like, Oh, this is easy. We're going to destroy it. Cause I want, I want an outpost of the damned. Like that's, that's a clear answer. Come on. What, what's the other alternative? We just leave it as is. And everyone's like, no, 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 we got to save it. It's one of our favorite things. And I was like, oh, that's so boring. And now they're actually doing something that isn't boring with it. Um, so first off, I wanted to ask, are you are you interested at all in in what's going on at old or uh, Golden Sands outpost, or new Golden Sands outpost, new new, new new Golden Sands? Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've had a few wanders around to to see what's going on. Like, I, I I'm not on Insiders, so I, I don't know what's Me either. actually going on. If, if that has been revealed uh, on Insiders, I I'm clueless. Yeah. I haven't played Insiders since uh, Gold Hold Hold of. Uh, Gold Order vaults were a thing. Um, I love those. So yeah, I'm that far out of touch with it. But um, I'm having a wander around. I'm trying to figure out what things could be. The staircase is massive. Mm-hmm. Like, isn't it? Nuts? How big is how big is that building going to be if that's the staircase? Yeah, right. Like, what is what is that going to be? I, I have no, I have no idea. Unless it's just going to be like a full on bastion. Um, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'm I'm excited, and I get where people in the community are coming from when they're like, "Yeah, destroy Gone Sands, it'll be change," and then save Gone Sands wins, and they're like, "Oh, that's boring." But change will still happen, no matter what happens. And obviously, with the current adventure as well, just to bring that forward, it's like, yes, we're gonna have potentially Flameheart coming back, but yeah. if Flameheart isn't to come back. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be a big bad. Like their resolve is going to strengthen. They're going to do something more. So, like New Golden Sands is now being redeveloped into this, whatever it is. Yeah. Like a similar thing is going to happen with this 
current community choice. Um, but yeah, I've had a look around. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't have any real clues about what it's going to be. I I I I want to say it'll be like a like a full on bastion. Like it is going to be a fortified, big towers, tall walls, like straight out of the uh, the the second tall tale for a pirate, or not the second tall tale, the third tall tale for a pirate's life, um, where you have to go into the keep and it looks fantastic. But it's like oh, mm-hmm. I'd love that in Sea of Thieves, but it was like there's no way they'd get there. there's no way they'd do that. And now it feels like they're actually doing it. And I'm like, oh, bring it on. I'm ready for this. Yeah. But, I mean, literally just had this thought run through my head. But Reaper's Hideout is literally like, it's a stone's throw away, right? Yeah. Like there's maybe, is there a portal between the two? Yeah, you get is like, like there's a little bit of Wanderer's Refuge. There's Twin Groves for sure. Like Twin Groves is dead. Like mm. any war that comes between <laughs> Reaper's Island or Reaper's Hideout and, and New Golden Sands, that island is just being destroyed. It's going to be a sand sandbar in in the mm. in the future. In the yeah, end, yeah, I think. Yeah, potentially that portal is going to that's that's no man's land. Essentially, like we've got yeah. the two warring factions. They are they're looking at each other across a small space of water. Like that is it's got to lead to something big. So yeah, we have fortified. Um, reapers hideout they have their cannons uh we, they have that potential space uh underneath the reapers hideout like that's that's a gateway to something yeah um oh, but yeah. we've not been shown what that is maybe that's going to come in if flameheart was to come back is that going to be the reapers version of the athena's hideout um and then yeah we've got new golden sands just across that little expanse and the portal in the middle so something's going to be coming from somewhere a reinforcement's going to be coming from the sea of the damned and trying to attack new golden sands so they are they fortifying against that or are we just specifically fortifying against the reaper's hideout i would i would be very interested to see if and see that's a, like tying it to the to the current adventure like if flameheart comes back i think it would be really cool if they started to actually like if it was a, a tit for tat situation with new golden sands building up all of their their uh, stone walls, if the reapers hideout started to do the same, if Flameheart comes yeah. back, that would be pretty cool. But I'm I'm with you in the sense that like if if Pendragon gets saved, that doesn't mean that we're not going to have Flameheart. That just means that the reapers are going to get more desperate, and maybe that's what yeah. kicks off them fortifying the reapers hideout because they've already lost again in whatever happened like first off i don't know why they're carting their father's grave like out in the middle of the open like oh hey by the way if you (laughs) forgot who you're fighting for this is him this is daddy everyone get a table sit down we're gonna have a nice uh tea time with him um but yeah i i I would love to see like them get a little more desperate than they already are because it feels like they're kind of on their they feel like they're on the win like they got their father's bones they got stitcher jim's head which spoilers is actually still stitcher jim's head they just you can't see it but they took some glue they took a little spit and they took some glue <laughs> and they put like flame hearts they they, re- they recovered his beard and they recovered his hair from the skull that was originally skull and they just they shaved off the the red and just put it back and just kind of yeah like spit on it and stuck it on there and just don't touch okay. it I was curious because yeah, I went to have a look at his little head and it's that's um, that's a pretty good looking skull for something that's been smashed apart twice yeah um, it's so yeah if that's still stitcher jim he's just been bleached a bit as well because he was looking a little bit uh, a little bit red the last time we saw him yeah yeah it's it, there's, there's been a dye job there's been some trimming a little glue like they trimmed off the bits of the hair that aren't like the the mohawk and they they glued it to his chin and they, they had to do some work like they had to make their yeah. own their own little prop session and they just sat down and worked on it little by little but it's it's still stitcher jim's head but yeah, I, I think it's very interesting that, that uh, and, and we've kind of been like you and I have kind of been on team flame or team uh, Pendragon for a long time. I feel like you cosplaying him and me doing, I, I, I feel like everyone's jumped on the, on the, the uh, Pendragon cosplay in game now that they've kind of worked out like what the, what the cosmetics are. Yeah. But I still stand by that. I've, I've been touting the, the Pendragon cosplay in game for as long as I can remember, as long as I've, I've been ever since the tall tales for pirate's life, at least uh, been doing that. But 
we've been kind of like to me pendragon is like the epitome of the hero in sea of thieves and we don't really exactly. have we don't really have a, a hero like ramses is just kind of a dude who's mm -hmm. hanging out he doesn't really he's not he's telling us to go on a grand adventure and he's telling us to be link and i'm fine with that because i like the idea of being your own hero but i also like having a champion and having a champion to rally behind is is always a fun thing you know it's why we have uh you know leaders to look up to is, is we're hoping that they are going to really champion our cause and take on that that burden so that our load is a little bit lifted but at the same time we can kind of you know still support the cause per se how i guess in the question here is is you you and i both want flameheart to come back because i want to see the fruition of that story but mm -hmm. at the same time i don't want to sacrifice pendragon for it so how are you how are you uh reconciling this this current adventure <laughs> well I'm, I'm definitely going to play both sides a bit because i want to get the full experience i want to like you don't want to miss out on cosmetics because it's what see if is all about so i will i haven't done the reaper side yet but i will do uh one run and I'll do everything that I need to do, and then I'll get back to <laughs> fighting for Pendragon's side. But yeah, I, I totally get why people want Flameheart to be in the game. He has been this kind of almost character of myth that has been ever-present. He's always spoken about, but we've never seen him. If, well, we're not going to see him in the flesh if he does come back, because he's got no flesh. Um, but he's never been present physically in the Sea of Thieves, and lots of people do want that, and I totally get it. And I think ultimately if that's the way the story goes i'm going to be happy anyway because then it's going to give me a cool new antagonist hopefully something that's a bit more imposing than something we've come across before with the ashen lords and uh the what are the captains called the soul flame um, captains no so the, oh, the, the mutinous helmsman uh, uh the duchess yeah. they had a title at some point they were but... just skeleton lords skeleton and lords there we go so they've kind of slipped into obscurity like so much that i've forgotten what they actually what well, their purpose was right. um but with flameheart like with the first trailer of sea of you you see him stepping through the ancient portal obviously we didn't know it's an ancient portal mm -hmm. way back when but he's there like eyes on fire flame in uh, sword in the air he looks freaking cool like yeah, yeah i'd love to fight him as a villain but that said it's not the choice that my pirate would make and that's kind of the thing that i'm leaning into so uh i mean yes your pirate is a reflection of potentially yourself when it comes to role-playing games i always tend to lean into the good story because i i think it it maybe makes me feel bad if i choose to be uh i'm gonna drop the b word here bastard um <laughs> that's fine yeah yeah <laughs> but uh, if i choose to be a, a bad person there you go that's, that's a different b word um <laughs> if i choose to be a bad person and make choices that are uh negative in the world then i kind of feel that as the player and it's not it doesn't make the connection with me but then fighting for the side of good i mean ultimately that's what everybody ever wants no one's gonna i don't know this is a pirate fantasy but no one's gonna kind of want to back the bad guy so they get more power um and mm -hmm. pendragon from the moment he stepped out of the portrait and put himself on the the captain's cabin of the black witch his presence is exactly that he is like the epitome of the hero yeah and yes people say that he's a fool he's the reason why flameheart is back but all of his actions have only have been done with good intentions and i know good intentions can still lead to bad things and obviously that's what we're seeing in sea of thieves misguided maybe a little bit foolish a little bit naive but still a very good man um and i think yeah his symbol in sea of thieves is one that i'm willing to fight for more than just to have a big bad um come into play but yeah. yeah just like we're seeing with new golden sands i think if flameheart loses the reapers are only gonna strengthen their resolve i think you're at this kind of turning point now with flameheart it's it is gonna happen whether he comes back in his own body or he steps through somewhere else because we're seeing changes with the servant of flame uh all this time he's been stood in the reaper's hideout um He's gone outside and touched Pretty sand much. for the first time. Yeah, and he's he's kind of been a non-character. Yes, he's there as much as 
the pirate lord is there, but he's he's not much, or he hasn't been much. But then when the adventures rolled around and we had the sea forts come in, we see him stride through the sea fort, and as he's speaking to his lackeys, we see his eyes glowing and kind of blazing red, and you're like, that wasn't happening before. So what's going on with you mm-hmm. underneath that mask? Like, what is Flameheart doing? Like, Flameheart is ruthless. He is this treacherous villain like is he gonna care about his his that's that's his son essentially his adopt his adopted son is that right yeah, it's his right adopted son. yeah. yeah but <laughs> i mean you're right you're like no one everyone keeps saying like flameheart's gonna help us or flameheart's gonna keep out the the gmu or flameheart's gonna free the sea thieves it's like no, no that's not his bag his bag is a, his free a sea of thieves his free sea of thieves is the free is the sea of thieves where he gets to go burn everything that's yeah, it's like, free for him to go destroy <laughs> yeah, he is chaotic evil i think is is the best alignment for him yeah um he he like if he doesn't get to go back in his own body he's going to find a way to come through to someone else's and yeah we could see if flameheart loses the seven of flame shift into something that's even less human and more like flameheart like i don't think flameheart would have any issues completely obliterating what is left of his son yeah no and just taking over his body completely right. and yeah i think ultimately that's what we would see yeah it's it's an interesting and and i have to sit here and and i, and I gotta point out like folks if you want to destroy pendragon if you want pendragon to get sucked into the sea of the damned and stuff i gotta tell you right now like if you, if you're a fan of black flag assassin's creed black flag he the the, the voice actor who did uh, Benjamin Hornigold in Black Flag will be out of work for a certain amount of time not doing Pendragon. Do you really want to put <laughs> the person who is Hornigold in Black Flag out of work for a while because you wanted to see Pendragon get his comeuppance? Also, I have to point out too, if you haven't read the comics, then you're missing out on a whole lot of stuff that uh, was really awesome stuff that Pendragon did. Like the Pendragon story leading up to the Sea of Thieves was like on the level of of like Indiana Jones like going out and doing the most crazy stuff and and helping kind of stop a bunch of really evil things and then starting to notice like a lot of the evil things are actually people and and just trying to do good by all means and it's like man that it like what better what better better character could you really ask for as like a hero in the sea of thieves yeah he is he is <sighs> just one of those characters who will keep pushing for good and yes it hasn't led to the best of places within the sea of thieves um but that's not his fault as a person like he's just been led in different directions people are treacherous like they will deceive you like he was deceived by gray marrow who was a man originally before he was a big scars and lord he was just a man and then pendragon taught him how to do summoning rituals and uh like this banishment type stuff and then that's what happened to pendrag so he's almost been a victim of his own uh Good, justice, goodwill I guess. Really. yeah goodwill that's the better word um but yeah i i will i will continue to fight for pendragon uh, as much as i can i i know the odds kind of look a little bit overwhelming uh when you look at twitter polls and youtube like lots of people want to side with flameheart um yeah but i think my pirate in itself he's he's an old guy and he's a good man and he will he will continue to fight that good fight as well and ultimately if we if we lose we'll be ready to fight whatever's coming i would i would rather see the reapers work harder on trying to like get their father back or or do something that's better than just get your father back yeah. at this point yeah i mean we're seeing this transformation with new gone sands a few uh well an update or so down the line like this is a transformation that is going to take some time and yeah if flameheart loses we're going to see a similar thing kicking back from the reapers as well it's only going to make them more of a threat it's going to make them more angry it's going to make them more desperate yeah so i think that's almost more exciting but at the same time i would love to see flameheart come back and have a proper skirmish with him like as long as he's a strong villain and i think it is something that we've struggled with with Sea of Thieves. It's getting something that is intimidating. Yeah. Uh, as as a foe, um, the Ashen Lords when they first came in, 
they were pretty tough. But now we know we can pull up in a galleon and you can line your cannons up and you can wipe them out with 60 cannonballs. They're a non-threat. And to have something that is quite foreboding, and if you load into a server and it might cause a big problem for you, even as far as just PvE goes, it is an exciting prospect. Yeah. Um, so whichever way, whichever way this adventure goes, like I think the result is going to be exciting. Ahoy there, pirates. This is the ad for this episode, and I did want to let you know if you wanted to avoid these and just get a regular filler, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a special feed just for patrons that get the ad-free version. If you want to keep listening, though, I can't say I blame you because this week I want to let you know about Loot Crate and getting 15% off of most crates and crate subscriptions when you use the link and code Robots Radio in the show notes. Also, you can head over to audiobooks.com, get your first three audiobooks for free, and that can include any two vip books or use the affiliate link for green man gaming if you're a pc gamer you'd like to save money on games it's one of the benefit of being a pc gamer head over to green man gaming you can get codes for steam epic any of the different stores that they have deals going on they have deals going on all the time and if you plan on buying there please consider using our affiliate link all of that goes straight to me through the network thank you all so much for everything that you do to support this podcast it means the world to me and i continue to try and improve the quality and the content for you with that pirates let's get back to the show do you want like we'll, we'll, let's kind of like let's play join join me on an adventure let's let's take a little walk down this this thought uh this thought path here and, and kind of like talk about do you think if flameheart comes back is this something that you want to have in adventure as a world event with it being tied to lore or do you want this to be something that is pushed off into like a private server for you to have a special encounter because i've had thoughts mm-hmm. on what i would like to see but i don't think that i'd be able to get what i want which is i want to have a fleet of ships that are flame hearts and sorry if you can hear noise in the background there's nothing i can do about neighbors no, um, but i want to see uh flame heart come to fruition i want to see him in the burning blade and i want to see him with the a fleet of ships like a physical ghost or not like not like the ghost ships but like physical ships uh that are a roaming fleet of ai threats that are probably harder than most of the stuff that you would see in a regular like skeleton fleet right and i just want them to be marked on the map and I want them to be going around like burning a trail through the Sea of Thieves as they try to take mm-hmm. out weaker pirates who are, are working for the, the merchant companies. Like I want to see someone have to like when the game first came out, Mike Chapman had a really beautiful idea. And that was uh, when you see a skull fort in the or you see a skull cloud in the sky, you can decide if you want to go do it or if you want to go help the people that are there or you want to go steal it. And same thing like with the Kraken. The Kraken's going to be a big world event and people are going to get caught in it and other people can decide if they want to come help it or uh, hinder it. And most of the time people usually use it as a way to hinder other people. But um, I want to see like a fleet of ships out there that Flameheart's controlling that Flameheart is is using to try and just be a huge nuisance on uh in in the world and and see like you know if there's areas that he can start to control and everywhere that he controls is like you know if he plants his flag on on Wanderer's Refuge then Wanderer's Refuge now spawns uh the 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 little um reaper phantoms or or like yeah. uh flaming skeletons you know take your pick of of whatever variant of of ai you can you can throw on there that's aligned to the reapers and just give you the ability to have to try and like push back this scourge and see where it goes but i wanted to, to hear like from your perspective if if we did want to get that big bad in the world if we did want to see like where sea of thieves was going with having Flameheart come back what would that look like to you I guess I haven't really thought about what consequence there could be, but like with what we've spoken about and what you've just said, like, yeah, having, having to be almost aware at all times, like you, like you should be in adventure as standard, like you've got to constantly scan that horizon. And if you see, if you're to see that fleet 
on the horizon, you see like a the burning blade in the center and then a few flagships. They're going to be able to spot you. Like, yes, we've had roaming scars and galleons, and occasionally they will decide just to make a beeline directly for you. They'll cross your path. They'll maybe crash straight into you. And yeah, like that's what they do. It's it's just that kind of organic nature. But if yeah, if they were on the horizon and then you get within their eyesight, they're going to beeline for you. So it's almost almost like that PvP engagement. So you you're sailing around in an enemy ship. Uh, like another player pirate could spot you if you can see them they can see you they're going to come for you and maybe that's what new golden sands is maybe going to give a bit of a safe haven from Mm -hmm. maybe that is the point if you are out in the wild and you're getting overrun they're they're going to push you back to somewhere that you can be safe so maybe there's going to be a lot more to golden sands than what we're seeing like it could expand into a, a port Mm. And you could pull your ship in, and then you're going to have a safe haven where you can quickly repair your ship, make sure it's staying afloat, and then man the island cannons. And mm. you've got to fight off the Burning Blade as they're circling and bombarding this fort. Mm. And like maybe we're seeing with the Veil missions, destructible uh, towers and stuff like that. I know that may cause issues when it comes to uh, um, servers and stuff like how are you going to represent rebuilding those um in a way that makes sense for the world to see if he's obviously the ones that were fighting uh in the veils are kind of almost drawn from the sea of the damned and then they they retreat but if gone sands is there and maybe you need to take stuff to repair it like we we've not seen anything more come into sea of Thieves as in in the way of uh repairing outside of wood Like, it's just that one item. It it patches up your ship. But maybe we could see, like, we're seeing big kind of uh, quarrying going on at Golden Mm -hmm. Sands. They're they're taking rocks from the ground. So maybe, yeah, as we're going around the Sufis, we'll find caches of stone that we'll then need to take to Golden Sands. And we can rebuild these structures and towers to give ourselves a stronger defense. And if you get overrun, maybe that's when you're going to lose out. But if you have enough pirates coming in to assist, you're having a constant flow of supplies. You're going to be able to rebuild your towers, uh, rebuild your fortifications, and then you can fight off flame high in that way. And he may have to retreat or pull back, or maybe he'll just sink into the de- the depths like the skeleton ships do. Um, Man, but Imagine- yeah, I don't know. There's so many opportunities and options. Imagine if you could grab like a, one of those big rocks, or one of those big bricks, like you do, like a regular chest, right? And you're able to kind of pick it up with a couple, you know, we'll just, we'll call them little mason picks or something. And you can pick it up and you can actually walk it over to the actual wall and put it on the wall and physically like, like Minecraft, just put the block back in place. And that helps build up the, like there could be a whole event to do that. And I imagine that's probably, that'd be a lot of work. (laughs) I can imagine that would be a really tough thing with the way that the, the game assets work from picking and putting something down it's not a very there's there's not a whole lot of precision and when we drop something it just drops um but i i could oh man i i would love the idea of of having to do the thing that i thought saving golden sands was in going to originally be which is instead of just delivering you know rum in in cloth we were actually like going to help build up the fortifications or or yeah. you know take on an actual war during that time and and that never happened but i did like having the idea of like there's going to be every every uh three hours a fleet of of ships from reaper's hideout are going to sail over and start assaulting golden sands and it's your job to get over there and help defend the golden sands that you wanted to save even though now you want to bring back Flameheart, well, guess what? Now you get to eternally actually save Golden Sands because otherwise the Reapers are just going to... now The now-resurrected Flameheart is going to continuously send every few hours a fleet, a world event fleet, that is going to go over and uh, try and destroy new Golden Sands and not Dagger Tooth for some reason. Yeah, I, th- I think it'd be cool. Like, New Golden Sands is now... It's, be- it's going to become this beacon of like the sea of use solidarity or at least the side that want to fight for for good um so yeah i think there's a lot of potential with what could go on there and obviously not being on insiders this could this is just pie in the sky like i don't have any idea of what's gonna yeah what's gonna come of it and yeah uh, i could be massively entirely wrong and this could just be an idea that's 
it's popped into our heads and it's it's nothing and it's nothing like what is actually gonna occur but it's it's fun to speculate Mm -hmm. yeah that's what i love i that's one of the things i enjoy about it i like i like that we have insiders and we can test if we need to test and stuff and i appreciate that but there's something about having not having the information available that really kind of helps build out the imagination uh of of what you could see it be and and with this being something that is still yet to be decided and i did want to actually i I found a uh a response from chapman online um because uh mixel pixel had pointed out that the uh the adventure rewards are um worded in a way that don't give away the outcome of what's going to happen which is is a fair mm-hmm. thing they did they don't want to say like oh congratulations for uh, you know you you helped to defeat the 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 reaper's bones here are the bell ritual sales it's like well they're not gonna flat out say that on on the sales because it's not determined but mixel pixel pointed out that um who a the the sales for bell say who aided bell as she attempted to prevent flameheart's return keyword attempted and yeah. it was implying that the that it was it was already determined as far as like the player choice and i want to point out like rare has stated that they're they're not going to be doing a live tracker on this they're going to be giving updates as the week as as the weeks go on so the first updates do out on monday as far as I'm, I'm aware from what I read, and we're going to be given updates on like how each side is doing, but it is very much a player choice at this point. But the interesting thing is, is I think a lot of folks are still kind of confused on whether or not it's lighting the beacons or turning in the dolls. And it's mm-hmm. a little bit of both because you don't actually get credit for lighting the beacons, but the more beacons that are lit when you do turn in a doll to your, your respective person, uh is what gives you the the credit for those beacons so you have to find a a doll and and a lot of people have been leaving them behind because they haven't thought that they were important because they thought it was all about lighting the beacons so make sure you're getting the dolls make sure you're killing the soul flame captains make sure you're enchanting or bewitching the dolls and then when you have as many of the flames as you want lit then go turn in the dolls just beware of tuckers because they'll probably be out there Um, but the the to get to the point of the thing is Mike actually said that that as far as uh, this being something that's predetermined, he says, no, it isn't. As you'll see with Golden Sands changing over time, changes can't be rolled in instantly. So the story will focus elsewhere with the outcome of Flameheart versus Pandragon rippling into future adventures. So mm-hmm. regardless of which side we we go on this, it's fascinating to know that they have the adventures planned out and they're they're literally just waiting to find out what the community decides at this point. And right now it feels like a lot of the community are leaning towards Flameheart. So I'll be very interested to see like where this all goes. Yeah, me too. Like it's it is like I don't know if you read them when you were a kid, but it's it's one of those pick your own adventure yes. novels, isn't it? And it's it's like I am totally guilty of when I was a kid choosing one path and then going to yeah. where it was and it was like you do I like cross this? a lake and like you're covered in leeches and do you have this in your inventory you're like no I don't I'm gonna go back I'm gonna walk around yeah. it. um but like we don't have that option now it's it is gonna be out of our hands um but yeah it's it's gonna be exciting whatever happens and I I, I just I'm hoping everybody keeps it civil um I know everybody has very strong opinions and people like to feel they're in the right but in this there is no right there's no wrong you just got to have a good time enjoy the path that you're taking and then enjoy the path that's going to come from those choices um and ultimately yeah like if pendragon loses it's all good like he's going to be banished to the sea of the damned there may be an option a year or more down the line when they think oh we've discovered this thing like we we've got the veil of the ancients that can now some things from the sea of the damned or open up gateways so there may be a workaround in multiple different aspects and if flameheart loses he's not going to come back in his body but there's going to be something that he can do further down the line flameheart is not just going to disappear um he is as tied to the sea of thieves as the pirate lord is like it's it's not just going to be flameheart didn't make it that's sad everything's nice and happy now um off you go 
like this that's not going to be the case is, is it just is it crazy for me to just want to actually have flameheart be gone so that we can see who's next I don't think so, but I th I, th I just think Flameheart is so ingrained in the lore of Sea of Thieves, like there's no getting rid of him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, ultimately, it's he's gonna happen <laughs> in one way or another. The first step was him being uh, set free from his skeletal form where he was bound. Yeah, and was he? He was betrayed by his own people, wasn't he? Like he, they locked him away. Yeah, it's it, there's there's a lot that I I still kind of go back and forth about like the history of Flameheart and and I hate to say it but I still haven't finished the Heart of Fire book so I'm still trying to get through that if I can pull myself away from Horizon for or Horizon Zero Dawn right now but um, my, yeah it, it, sorry it, but yeah he's he's kind of had a, an interesting history but yeah it's it'll be interesting to kind of see like what happens to him but go on sorry i interrupted uh yeah i was just gonna say my uh my copy of the heart fire arrived this weekend i've only just gotten around to picking it up um it's so and good as so far, far as i've got <laughs> as far as i've got is like the first page like i haven't really had time to just sit and read i'm not a big reader i i do enjoy reading but as far as like hobby time goes reading is like way down on the list i can do like i love audiobooks like i'd rather sit and listen to something and have it all yeah just delivered to me and uh i went for the uh athena's fortune novel as as the audiobook although i i own the physical version i just i can't make the time to read but as far as i've got in the heart of fire is the first page and there are a lot of people who are out there and like pendragon doesn't deserve redemption like this is his doing and I'm like sorry the very first page of this book says uh, this takes place eight years before Sir Arthur Pendragon and a crew of pirates inadvertently <laughs> set the spirit of Flameheart upon the Sea of Thieves. So it's not just Pendragon. You had a part in that as well. If you were there, you sailed the boat, you picked up all the other captains, you helped save them. Yeah. And if you're going to take the credit for helping save uh, uh, Captain Stone and Martha Jane... Yeah. then you have to take the credit for unleashing Flameheart as well. Yes, you might have been there and like thought, this guy doesn't look, this doesn't look quite right. Why are they taking this sarcophagus here? You questioned it, but it still happened. You were part of that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's not Pendragon's fault. Like, Pen Pendragon had the sword, but he didn't know where to go. Yeah. Like we, we were all part of that. We've played into it. And ultimately this is where it is. And I think I've seen that argument a few times. It's like, yeah, this is Pendragon's fault. So I'm going to side with Flameheart. I was like, what do you mean? That doesn't make sense. You are angry at the person who's unleashed the big bad on the world. So you're going to side with the big bad, which we all know is kind of a bad thing. Um, but yeah, like some of the arguments out there are silly. But I, I th yeah, it's the law is just is such a fun thing to get into. And I will get through the heart of fire and learn more about Flameheart's history. But yeah, I just think he's just so much like so ingrained in what the Sea of Thieves is. He's not going anywhere. If yeah. he doesn't come back now, he is going to come back eventually. I am. I am very curious to 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 kind of see like what a world would be like without Flameheart, because I have always kind of kept my eye on what has been going on with the Dark Brethren court, and there's that is an interesting story to me because I think it's made up of a motley crew of people who have had more stakes in Sea of Thieves compared to um what's been going on with flameheart like flameheart had his time and he was he was in there doing stuff he was he was um you know re causing havoc and it was all before we actually got to the sea of thieves now we have a bunch of people who are just like us have been in sea of thieves and have had issues with what's been going on um like duke Duke's, you know, and I'm not going to talk about some of the spoilers from Heart of Fire, but Duke essentially was a bad guy and from the get go. Mm -hmm. And I've always, I've always pointed at him and being like, look at the bad guy. And we look at Wanda. Wanda wanted to do something. She was told no. She still went out and did it her her own way, and that way led to the the path of of uh, of, of scorn or of, of being uh, told no by too many people. Yeah. And, and people get angry when that happens, you know, when you get told no too many times, you get vengeful about that kind of thing. And 
those people are and, and Davy Jones as well too in a sense like they've all kind of got very interesting character personalities but I've always been very interested to see what will happen with this captain if the captain is mm -hmm. is hook that'll be very interesting because I want to see like where that goes and I have enough of, of of enough trust in rare as a studio to be able to do hook properly without it being too uh, too much of a play on what everyone thinks of as hook as like the peter pan disney movie i think hook will be a different character um that we experience a very sea of thieves type of character and mm -hmm. with flameheart kind of having already had his time in Sea of Thieves, I wouldn't mind having like, you know, one one more good bout just for the, you know, for, for the sake of his reputation. And then I, I, I really want to jump into what the future of Sea of Thieves is because we're creeping up on five years now and we've had one big bad this whole time and it's always been Flameheart. And well, we've had the Gold Hoarder too. I can't discredit the Gold Hoarder, but the Gold Hoarder didn't feel um, as kind of like 2017 trailer with him mm -hmm. walking out of the ancients portal uh you know chest ablaze eyes ablaze you know sword in hand screaming for skeletons you know and i always just wanted to see like what is what comes after flameheart like what is rare got in the bag that is beyond just where we've been leading this whole time and i and i think that's kind of like where my sights are set right now but i i, I can't discredit the the appeal of having like flameheart coming to life and being able to have that moment to really really kind of say like this is how we're going to defeat flameheart for good yeah like <sighs> it's i know it goes <laughs> it goes completely against what you want as far as like flameheart always being in in the uh the world but um i don't know it, it, if he did go would, would you feel like the sea of thieves has lost something special it's a, it's hard to say like yeah you mentioning the gold hoarder yes he's he's a villain but he's not present like he's no. been sat, he's been sat at the shores of gold. He's there on his throne. Uh, obviously, now we know he's there, just staring into the void of other realities at what he doesn't have. And that's cool. Like as as a concept for a for a villain, yeah, that's it's very exciting and very interesting as a as a character that just so he's so lost in all of that. But then that's that's the only place he is, like apart from the, obviously the tall. Uh, Pirates life tool tales. Um, but yeah, I th I think if Flameheart wants to move aside, if he's gone, yes, it's gonna open up space for a new villain, the captain being hook, like there are so many little details, and we've all seen them. The the cigarette burns or the cigar burns on the, the map table, the the kind of scratch marks on the armrest of the chair, like it makes sense. And I don't think if Hook was to come in, he would be the disney peter pan version although disney have that link now with sea of thieves i think they would still be able to push that away um i'm a big fan of the, the movie hook the, the robin oh, williams film yes it's, <laughs> it's in my it's in my top three movies like i will watch that multiple times a year it's it's comfort food in movie form um and to have like uh, shabby has done amazing concepts of if that hook was a skeleton captain and we know well he dies at the end of hook spoilers sorry it's a 30 year old film um, oh, does he though does he well he, he, just, he disappears he yeah disappears. He, he vanishes who, into who knows the, into the inanimate crocodile that belches when he jumps inside his mouth mm -hmm. um <laughs> but we know if, as far as like the disney version of peter pan goes like hook is kind of banished from neverland so yeah he has to go somewhere else and maybe the sea of thieves or the cusp of the sea of thieves is where he's ended up so i don't i don't i think it was one of your more recent um episodes you mentioned you don't you don't want lost boys you don't want tinkerbell you don't want peter pan and i don't think we're anywhere near that because we're not connected to that law uh but hook as as a villain would also be a very exciting thing um Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that would that would be the only kind of prominent big bad that I think could step in. And yeah, with, like you said, with the Dark Brethren, it's just full of people that have been scorned by Flameheart. And it's it's just another reason to think, well, why do you think this is going to work out in this particular way? If Flameheart comes into 
power. Like he's just going to mess with everyone. He doesn't care if he sets everything on fire. He doesn't care if he destroys the like established norm within that world. He is just going to throw people aside, left, right, and center. He's going to betray allies. Um, so whoever's siding with him, like he's not going to, he's not working for you. You're just under his thumb. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's. Which- also That's goes back to the the idea of like what's been going on with the Heart of Fire book, which I'm I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are when when you get to finish that up because it it really does kind of point out like if you guys haven't read Heart of Fire and you're and you're rooting for Flameheart, boy, I I think I think you might want to read that book because uh, it it seems it seems like there's a lot of grand ideas about what could be when it comes to supporting Flameheart and it goes up to that point but no one ever thinks about the consequences that that come in afterwards and the reason I bring that up is because we got a tweet that was actually on the I believe it was on Halloween uh, that Rare had tweeted out like a quick little tease and in the in the actual little little video it had like a a shot of the reaper's table and it had a shot of the the flame heart sails that we get for Mm -hmm. the adventure and then it had three skeletons but those skeletons were like they weren't current costumes that we have and i'm pretty sure they're costumes because they kind of shape around the body shape of of pirates that we've normally seen in their videos yeah but it looks as though that that could be a tease for what's coming with Flameheart. Like if Flameheart comes back, then in, in the in also all of the artwork that we've gotten for this adventure has been very interesting. Like I have the Pendragon team Pendragon wallpaper up on my computer, and mm-hmm. nothing in that background looks like stuff I've ever seen in the game. So I've yeah. I've, I've never seen like a wall of books uh, books shelves with books on them. I've never seen like uh, shark jaw on uh, a bulletin board with the magpie's wing flag like on the wall in the background and uh i was it was pointed out to me as well too like Flameheart is is got the same thing like it's it's in an area where there's a lot of lava and it does not look familiar so it makes me wonder like win or lose i think each of each of the teams are going to get like a new area to explore but i would be very curious to find out like with with Flameheart winning if those costumes are going to come as a result mm. and we're going to get like a new area like will the will the door to the reaper's hideout finally be lifted and we'll finally get to go down inside and people will be able to choose to renounce their pirate legend status and become a true uh servant of the flame and yeah. as a result they get like they, they get one of those costumes or something like I, i'm yeah. very curious they, they lose. maybe that that's it's it could be a new curse and yes there are variations of them and normally the curse is just one one look in particular but yeah maybe that's the thing like you kind of sell your soul essentially yeah um and then you become this non-human entity um but you know you know how it goes with those scouts and captains are described as kind of a bit mindless and (laughs) <laughs> obsessive and like yeah it's like the wild rose tall tale where you come up on uh is it captain Rooksy. rook yeah rook um and she's just there sat at the campfire kind of mumbling and there's this insane kind of dialogue that's going on and no one else is chipping in but like that's kind of what they've sacrificed in order to have this uh non-human existence yeah, and they've kind of lost parts of themselves, and then obviously the scouts and lords and ashen lords they kind of maintain a bit more of that. But you're just going to become a pawn in that, essentially. Like, yeah, obviously you're going to have your free will as a character to do as you please. But yeah, you kind of that's that's the price that you pay for your pirate, maybe. Let's let's be honest here. Like most of the reapers are all pretty pretty brainless anyway. Like they're just like they're they're equivalent to uh to to combat is to running out and into the sea with all their goods and just running away so i mean like it kind of it, it tracks it makes sense but uh yeah it's you, you're giving something up even if you think you're getting something good and i mm-hmm. and i think that I, I think that people's curiosity is driving that more than what they think the consequences are for the story because at the end of the day i think everyone kind of comes to the point it's like ah oh, well it's a video game my choices don't really matter and it's yeah. not like i'm gonna it's not like i'm not gonna get to play the game 
if I make the wrong choice. So it's it's hard to it's hard to argue against that. But at the same time, I also want to just, you know, like think think of like what could come if we do this for the rest of the story and decide like, you know, you, we don't get to we don't get to jump ahead in the book. We don't get to see like what happens to our characters in the future. So try and make the prudent choice as opposed to the one that you think is the more flashy one. Mm. Well, I'm trying to think if there was something else that I wanted to touch on. Is there was there anything that you can think of that I remember we wanted to talk about or that uh, that you wanted to jump into with this stuff um, that we get covered? As, as far as like the law goes and adventure, like I, I am a kind of as blind to the future as anyone else. Like I, I'm not. Like I do enjoy my law, but I'm not a law master. Like we have the Ancient Arts University and people like uh, Captain Falco who will do these deep dives and kind of I skim the surface of that and I can pick up what I can. But yeah, as far as speculation and kind of having any idea of what's coming next, I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just I think ultimately with this adventure, it's, it's going to be a fun run and it's going to be fun to see where the game goes from this point this could be a massive turning point like i i'm really enjoying the adventure as a whole like i haven't actually said that but like um the the to and fro of going around and capturing these points i think that's a really kind of compelling gameplay element and i I think i'd like to see more of this going forwards because if there is going to be this power struggle like we've not seen that until this point now you can log into a server and you see red pillar red pillar green pillar and you're like okay i've got work to do here and if that is what's going to come like that's going to be really exciting um but yeah at the same time for my pirate like i don't know where that wants to where that's going to lead me um and yeah my pirate's journey is it's always kind of been something that i've kind of stood by it's people kind of get caught up with missing out on things and not earning specific um uh, cosmetics and things like that and i'm like well that's that's okay if you've missed out on this thing then that's just because your story hasn't taken you in that direction so if my pirate going forwards has this kind of change ahead i don't know what that's going to do for me like i i do like to go around and sink people when i can i do like to get the loot in and get the gold so i like playing that side of it yeah but at the same time i will happily pull up to a ship that's parked at an island have a chat with someone and like just have a good time and enjoy being in that world um so yeah i think it's gonna be an interesting year going forwards and just seeing how this evolves um yeah i'm really clueless as to what it's going to entail one way or the other but and i'm going to enjoy it you you bring up something that and and i did want to uh kind of touch a little bit on the adventure because i feel like we we may have actually kind of glossed over a lot of that (laughs) uh but you bring up something that i think I, I've never heard anyone uh, articulate it this way, but I really enjoy the idea that when you say that if people have missed out on some of the content, then that's because their story hasn't taken them that way. That is probably the most elegant way that I've I've heard someone explain away FOMO in my entire life. And, and I think that's it's a really interesting idea is, is this is our story. This is our pirate story. If we miss out on content, that means that we weren't drawn to that content during that time. That doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, you missed out on it. You, you have no clue what's going on or, or or you're not part of the cool club. It's like your pirate story didn't lead you to that to that yeah. eventuality. And I think that's something that is probably one of the one of the more interesting things that I've I've heard from someone, because it, it always does kind of come back to that idea of like you make sure that you're always um you're always playing the adventures, make sure you're always getting all the cosmetics. If you don't do it, then you're missing out. And, and you know, I've always been a, a staunch believer that the story should be something that people can experience in some way or the other, so that if they did want to, uh, if they did want to understand what was going on, then they can. But if, if they don't, then that's no different than someone coming into the game uh, now having missed all this and not really knowing like what's going on. And that's, you know, there's ways that they can find out about that, but that is true to their pirate story. You know, they came yeah. to the Sea of Thieves at this point. There's a whole lot going on. And if you, if, if I think about it now that I'm actually, you know, talking this through with you, 
that's kind of what happened when we first started playing the game, right? Like Flameheart's mm-hmm. story, the Gold Hoarder's story, all of that stuff had already been going on in the Sea of Thieves by the time we arrived. It's not like we saw them rise to greatness and then had to deal with the repercussions of that. That was all all said and done. And we missed out on that story. And we've had to, you know, we've had to have two books at this point to really kind of flesh out what happened in the past. Uh, but we're still trying to discover what happened in, in the Sea of Thieves before we got there. And that's not too different than what people are experiencing right now. So I think this is probably the first time I've actually agreed with the argument that adventures are the way to go when it comes to storytelling, because it's pushing the world forward at a quicker rate than tall tales, even if it doesn't get to re- to retain in the, in, in the world so that p- future pirates can come and actually experience it. Yeah. And uh, I th- like that kind of my way of thinking of that initially came out when uh, Arena was in its kind of final stages. Uh, and there was a lot of kind of talk of people being disappointed that they missed out on uh, the different ship sets and mm. uh, weapon sets and things like that. And that was kind of when it clicked with me. It's like, yeah, like you haven't gotten to that point yet. You haven't earned that good boy set because that's not where your story has taken you. Um, for for me, I did spend that time in arena and I enjoyed it. I, I actually played 70% of my arena time solo and I earned every single cosmetic. Uh, I had the good boy set before the closure was announced and that's part of my story's history now. Like I do have that, uh, those commendations and those cosmetics ready. So if I do want to take them out, like I, I love the sea dog cannons, the triumphant sea dog cannons are some of the nicest ones in the in the game, like next to the sailors and the golden sailors, the uh, killer whale and the triumphant sea dog cannons. Mm-hmm. Like they are my go tos. Nothing other than that will really work for me. Um, but that is part of the story that my pirate took. He took time away from the adventure side of it and that kind of PV. P- P- v- e- P- v- P- oh god i can't say it <laughs> you know what i'm going for yeah. um it took time away from that and i worked towards those achievements and unlocking that because that's what i wanted to do and yeah it's it, it, that kind of has to resonate through everything else like i could look back to the first year of the game where we had the skeleton throne to come in and at the time i was playing the game pretty much solo now i have a crew that's built up over a couple of years and a few people have come in a few people have left yeah but at the time the skeleton thrones i didn't have a crew so it was just me so that is one aspect of the cosmetics that i missed out on but then i can look at it and i think well my pirate was on his own then and trying to form those fragile alliances with other people sailing around it was difficult and to gain people's attention to say hey do you want to come and do these thrones with me so i can do the thing it, it didn't happen but that's mm. that happened so yeah i've missed out on those cosmetics there but then that's just the way the story went like, i probably had multiple times where i sailed up to the ship and was like hey do you want to go sit in that throne on top of marauder's peak and they blasted me out of the water um yeah. so that's the way it goes and yeah when our pirates have appeared in the sea of Thieves for the first time we see these things from the past so new pirates coming in may roll up on a ship that's running the full triumphant sea dog and they're like that looks cool what is that all about and it's just these little snippets of history from the game that are represented visually or the sea dog's tavern being this kind of monument in the center and people are like what is that all about and it's the same with the story of flameheart and the gold order there's been so much going on beforehand that we've we get snippets of but we haven't had that full story Mm -hmm. um but yeah that's it's just been a way that i've looked at the game since well for a long long time but yeah it really kind of came to a point when the arena was closing i was was like it's okay it was like that's just your story's gone elsewhere you're going to have multiple times when you've been out on the seas and i don't know done earned a million gold in one sale and you're like that's cool like that gold is in your pocket and you spent that on all the things that you have and the individual stories i think are, are really what make see if you so compelling and keep me coming back i think a lot of people could learn to really kind of make a choice for themselves to really kind of like accept that 
you don't have to have everything in the game. You you having everything in the game means that not any one thing is special because you've worked on everything, you've gotten everything, and, and you may have favorites, but um, telling your pirate story should be a direct reflection of how your engagement with the game is. And I also think that it's good to take a break from games as well, too. So I, I think if, yeah, if if you if you're being true to who your pirate is and you're and you're wanting to play that play the game in that way then it's it's a hundred percent a rational decision and probably a healthy decision to decide like where is your engagement what are you trying to do um it's what i think is is probably one of the coolest things about the milestones is i've been playing the game the way i want to play it even Mm -hmm. though i would love to have certain cosmetics and certain milestone trophies uh yeah. unlocked i'm really trying to play the game just naturally the way that i would and every once in a while something will pop up on on the milestone uh trophies that i'll see that i'll be like oh i, I unlocked that that's fantastic and i didn't realize that i do actually play that way it's just not all the time and the ways that yeah. i do play are definitely a lot more representative of like who i am as a person and it's it's really interesting to kind of see where that goes but I, I love the idea that your your pirate story is reflected in the content that you decide to engage in all across the board not just like with the milestones or the captaincy thing but that's a it's a really unique perspective that i don't hear too often in, yeah. in the community I, I think when it comes to milestones at least there's a lot of contention when they first came out and fortunately i had my approach already so i was sitting back and watching twitter as crews were posting videos of them standing in circles eating fruit and setting themselves on fire for hours on the end and i'm like but like yes you want to complete these things and achieve these things but are you enjoying it like yeah you can tick the boxes all day long but engage with the content in a way that's natural that works like you're not on any other day you're not going to go into sea of thieves and sit on your ship set it on fire and just stand there for hours it's not going to happen and that's kind of what people missed the point with milestones a mm-hmm. lot um but yeah for watching that from the outside was quite amusing um yeah and it... i get what well, i get people's frustration with wanting to complete things and seeing a lofty goal of sleeping in a bed for however many minutes and thinking what well, no one's ever going to do that and it's like but you might and if you don't that's okay yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. Like when it does happen, you'll be like, "Oh man, I didn't realize." You know, I, I and and I'm I'm really I am kind of curious how many people actually use the beds because for me it's it's usually when I'm solo and usually when I'm just like a sliver of health away from being topped off. Then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go lay in the bed. I'm not gonna bother with the banana. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some time in on the on the mattress and kind of work towards that milestone little by little. <laughs> Well, I have one crewmate in particular uh, <laughs> who has made it his mission to increase my ship's sleeping in bed milestones uh, every opportunity that he gets. So I notice every time, but he goes below deck, he just disappears. <laughs> and then I just hear him chuckling away to himself because he knows that I've clocked on to him doing it. And he's just increasing that rogue <laughs> uh, milestone for me. <laughs> he's just, he just wants it to be so when people look at my logbook and they see oh time slept in bed, <laughs> a stupid amount. And yeah, it's it's funny. And that that is, that's becoming part of his pirate's journey. And uh, like, yeah, I, I think that's one thing that's maybe different with myself as a content creator uh, compared to uh, many of the large creators and partners, I tend to only sail with my friends. And I know that lots of people have creator friends that also stream Sea of Thieves. Mm-hmm. But for me, pretty much the whole journey, I could count on both of my hands, like the amount of other creators that I've sailed with uh, for a stream. And that's not that I don't want to, but my playtime is exactly that it's the time when i get to socialize with my friends and have a laugh so i will play with my friends twice maybe three times a week if we're lucky uh the rest of the time i'm doing makes and crafting on the stream but um but yeah it's just yeah i've never had kind of those opportunities well i, I could have maybe I, i'm just kind of 
Hey, you you reached out to I'm me. I'm begrudged to re- yeah. I'm begrudged to reach out sometimes. Like I I don't want to pester people, um, but a lot of my playtime is just that. It's just to go into the game, have fun, relax with my friends, and uh, yeah, it's it's just really important to have that. I think, and I think some people miss that. Um, just enjoy the game and play it the way that you naturally would play it. And if my friend wants to go and sleep in the bed and chuckle about it like a little child, then he can do that. And I, I'm not going to care. Um, but yeah, it's Pirate Journey, I think, is everything that Sea of Thieves is about. I, I 100% agree with you. I wanted to kind of shout out the adventure because I... I think that, that we've gotten so caught up with the with the community decision mm-hmm. that we've kind of failed to address what I think has actually been really interesting because I think not um, not the last adventure, but the one prior to that where we had to talk to Bell to work on reconstructing the skull of uh, the ancient warrior for the 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 ritual at at Plunder Valley. Um, uh-huh. And this adventure, uh, Sea Forts and shrines uh something that came with season one and uh season four is it four or was it five i think it was five yeah I think it was season five um two content dlcs that we got in the last year um roughly and i, I feel like th- this has actually been something that's really interesting to me is is they're using they're using the the story of the world they've built in content and they've let us play around with the content and we had story kind of around that um but the last few adventures have really tried to showcase content that's already into in the game and i love it because it, it reminds people that there's there's stuff to do in the game that isn't just sailing around and it also helps uh, if you wanted to uh, work on commendations that you that you normally wouldn't really spend time working on. Like maybe there's mm-hmm. something else you'd you'd rather be doing with your time, but you haven't really gotten to work on those commendations. Like I, I took uh, the the trick or treat event that we got and uh, worked on the the burying stuff, uh, the buried yes. treasures stuff so I, I went around i did the last few sits that i had a, that i had like left to to do and uh got those knocked out and then i went and buried a whole bunch of treasure for a bunch of people and got really rewarded for it because i i don't know how much i buried but i got about a hundred grand uh the next day that i logged in and i was like that's i'm good with that that's fine for me i didn't have to go risk turning it in um but i love the idea that these adventures are taking us back to areas of the world that might be considered old hat at this point because it's Mm -hmm. it's prior content and i know a lot of a lot of folks are probably thinking ah it's just recycled content ah we're just doing the same thing over again um but it's not always the same it's not always new stuff for everyone and a lot of the content in the game honestly like sea forts probably my favorite thing in the world uh to, to to go do i love they're really fun i yeah they're fantastic beautiful well done well implemented i love that i can literally do a lunch break and 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 that's what my sloop's name is is just on lunch break i can take 30 minutes i can <laughs> sail out to the wherever i spawn in doesn't matter where i spawn in i can take i can sail out go do a sea fort and get it all turned in in 30 minutes and with the adventure having the uh, beacons now with the soul flame captains and if you're defending against an athena one uh you get the 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 the, um, ancients priests uh phantoms i love that these are themed and that it's constantly a balance i would love if these beacons started to apply as um kind of a modifier for for reputation not gold but mm-hmm. definitely reputation uh towards different um like different factions like if if say you're a gold hoarder and you wanted to work on gold hoarders you could do the emissary flag but if you didn't want to do the emissary flag you could always go capture sea forts and light a beacon and whatever gold uh hoarder stuff that you get from those sea forts apply a reputation grind for mm. those trade companies and i think that the beacons and the flags have introduced a new concept a uh, very kind of like capture the flag or not capture the flag a uh, a point control um yeah. design that i've wanted to see for a very long time in the game 
back when arena was open i wanted to see these uh kind of implemented like having beacons each each ship on a uh each ship in the arena had a specific color associated with its ship name and if you got a lantern with that color you could go light the beacon and you would control that island until someone went and doused the flame and then put their their color up now that we have something like this in sea of thieves with the six sea forts uh i would love to see more of this design kind of bleed into the everyday for sea of thieves and i'm not sure how that would be implemented the reputation was the first idea i could think of um but how 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 do you feel as far as like the the beacons go as far as the the push and pull the tug of war that's going on do you want them to have something like this kind of built into the game naturally like in the future i think it would be i think it would be good i think the main thing with sufis there is so much to do like knowing at this point where you should divide your attention is the troubling thing so um obviously in the early days of sea of thieves you drop into a server and you would only get one sea fort every four hours or mm -hmm. something similar um and then everybody would rush to the sea fort because that was where you made your money now it's almost so easy to make money and there are beacons everywhere so there is a fort fortune in the sky that goes down and then a moment later there's a, uh, a skeleton fleet um then there's reaper's bounty chests or uh, things like that so it's it's it would be definitely finding that balance um and seeing kind of how that would work so almost like we have a uh, gold rush mm -hmm. so or is it the golden hour so basically that little bit of time where if you're on at that moment then you can go and sell your stuff for more money and yeah i think that works and having more of an indicator of that would be interesting and yeah if it's a, a level related thing that's a different avenue but i think you'd have to kind of tether how much you put into the game so if if you were making a point that you wanted to draw people to forts or to sunken kingdom areas which are a bit, a bit more problematic because if you draw multiple people to those locations you're just going to have people roll up on your ship and sink you while you're down there um yeah. but that's another, that's another matter um but yeah it's it's just finding that level of how much you can put in before it becomes too distracting yes at the moment we've got this adventure and it's nice to have a point that's definitely under control there and you can see it from across the horizon um and i think going forwards yes it's it would be good to have those points for a stretch of time but maybe a single one at a, put at, at a time so if there was a fort that was boosted up with something to draw you in so whether it was uh i don't know a rich, uh, additional reaper's bones reputation mm -hmm. and there would be a particular indicator that would draw you there and there would have to be something that would visually say this is kind of it's a static beacon at the moment that means it's it's going for a while and then maybe as time is kind of closing in it would start to flicker and disappear so you know kind of what time you're working with um so if you come in and you're sailing towards it and it starts to flicker you maybe know oh, okay man, I've, I've missed that opportunity um but yeah it's just drawing it's it's like you said with the adventures it's nice that they're drawing people's attention back to the content that has been in for like the past year bringing them back to the sunken kingdoms bring them back to um the sea forts now but it is a case of balance so you can only draw people in so many different directions because you still want to pe have people engage together whether that is in pvp or to form alliances and work together um but yeah i, I definitely a fair think point. There's, yeah yeah there's stuff that could be done going forwards um to bring people back to that content um but it would have to be done in a way that's measured and is not overwhelming because obviously if, if we were to go forward from here and the adventure's done and we spawn in and we just see beacons everywhere it's it's distracting and i kind of that almost is a little less immersive for what sea of thieves is kind of used to yeah you can get a skull cloud up in the sky and you think okay that's going on over there but if you spawn in this you're surrounded with uh different activities it kind of you lose a little bit of that immersion in the world i think oh um, no no yeah go ahead to say I, I i missed out on the sunken kingdom adventure um i was unwell at that time so i just i don't know what it was i was just out of action for yeah the best part of two weeks 
Um, and it was right when that was happening and I couldn't bring myself to get on and stream or even just sail. I was just out of it. So I, I missed out on that one. Um, but when it came to burying and also sea forts, I inadvertently just did that stuff, even though it was trick or treat. I mm-hmm. didn't go out with the plan to bury stuff. I just thought, today I'm just going to do it. And I didn't even connect it with what was going on externally. It was just on that day, I felt like ticking <laughs> that box. Um, and the week preceding the current adventure, I completed every single one of my fort commendations. So oh, wow. <laughs> it's not that that has even helped me go back to the the, the current adventure has helped me go back to the, the forts. Uh, I just did it kind of off my own back because uh, I, I didn't know it was coming and I just thought, yeah, yeah. I'm going to poop around some forts and get some completions and just do that. And again, it's, it's that natural approach that you've still got to maintain within the game. Although you want to draw people's attention, you still want them to decide where their adventure is going to take them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, I always find it, it and I'm, I'm so close to finishing up mine too. I think I've got like one or two left to do it and i'm glad that this adventure has kind of brought us back to those because it's like helped tie up some of those but um yeah it's 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 really interesting to kind of see like the the folks that have gone through and really grinded out a lot of those uh commendations and how the content is like bringing us back to stuff that we've had in the past and given folks that haven't done it an opportunity to jump back in but i wonder how how a lot of the people that have done those generally feel about having to go back and do this stuff all over again after they spent so much time grinding it out when it first came out. Yeah, I, I, I get you. Like, I think that's fine. Like, if they have decided to do that grind there and then, like, there are people every single season, and you see them. And uh, what was it when Sunken Kingdom first came out? There were people who completed that within. A day. Hours, yeah, it was Hours, insane. Yeah, um, and if that's the way they want to play, and that's fine, I I can't make myself do that level of re- repetition. <laughs> yeah. um, but like, if that's where they derive their excitement from and their drive from from the game, then that's that's great. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's just sorry, I, I I forgot where you were on your oh, statement, just... and then I've I started mine off and I've completely lost track. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, it, I wonder how they how they feel about that because it does feel oh, okay. like, uh, yeah, they're they, like they've already been there, they've done that, and now they're they're kind of over it. And I think maybe to a disservice to themselves, uh, now that they have to go back and and do these all over again. But yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I think they they do have that new drive. So it's not like they're going and they're getting nothing at all. So. Mm the fort control at the moment that is the new task at hand and yeah we're not going to know how that is evolving over the course of these like two weeks of the um, adventures active and that's that's going to be it's going to create a lot of tension i think for people who are really invested Mm, in how the story is going to go it's going to completely drive them to act if they want it to go a particular way they don't know which way it's going not like golden sands where we had fog rolling in and drifting off when the balance was changing. We don't see that at the moment. So we've got Pendragon with his sword stuck in the painting. And I've got to say, he's looking the least heroic that he has ever looked <laughs> right now. Right. Um, he he looks like a rabbit in headlights, uh, just completely panicked. And I'm baffled as to how he was transported from the the captain's cabin of the Black Witch out onto the, uh, the mainland of Shipwreck Bay. Um, but yeah, he's there and he's just looking terrified but is that going to change as we go forward are we going to see a little bit of fluctuation because we did with golden sands we knew kind of how it was looking day to day Mm -hmm. um but with this like we don't we he's he's just there he's static and then we have flameheart being as charismatic as as ever just lying in a coffin um we're not seeing that kind of tilt and change so yeah if people have done it before they do have that drive and whichever way their story wants to go, like that is their new focus for this. So it's not so much that they have to go back to the forts and do them as many times as they've done them before, but they are fun little forts. Like I really enjoy just buzzing around with, with a pistol and popping everything out. It's a nice little opportunity to kind of tighten up your, your aiming skills and things like that. So I don't think people will begrudge it really. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you can, you can see the power struggle like across the map. So if you've got someone who's going around and, changing your beacons like that's going to be fun to like try and 
track them down and kind of knock them off their kind of goals. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think people will begrudge it too much. Um, yeah, it's just that little little aspect of change that's going to help drive people forwards. I have been seeing a lot of folks uh, not care so much about the gold and and mm. mostly just focusing on getting the flags raised and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it, it I, I think you you definitely bring a real strong point to that. I I've actually been really interested to see what the takeaways are for this from both the community and the studio because I, th- I think this was meant to be something that would drive pvp uh in a lead up to what they've said is going to be a pvp focused season eight mm. and i'm i'm not seeing i'm not really seeing the pvp aspect of this but i don't know if that was the initial intention either like i know that they that they wanted us to to go and do this but is is did they did they intend for us to actually be fighting other people at these sea forts to try and gain control? Because it seems like they're so spread apart that it, it would be hard yeah, to continue to, to work on that. I think it's just it's that funneling um, of content. Mm-hmm. So it's got to remain natural. Um, it's not like the arena where we're closed into one small space and you can see every ship from what, exactly where you are. But if you can see a beacon that's lit, you know someone's been there fairly recently so if you kind of head in that direction if your goal is to go out there and try and find people who are doing this like that's giving you that little indication and yeah you might be a bit late they might have been there 15 minutes ago and sailed across the other side of the map but it's that gentle nudge that Mm -hmm. people are going to get and it's going to kind of poke them in a direction and you might just catch a glimpse of that ship on the horizon and then you chase them down like i think that's that's the approach i don't think they intended people to just sit on forts and wait for people to come in um yeah it's all about kind of getting around to everything and Mm -hmm. gaining that control and yeah maybe you're seeing that there are four beacons lit um when you log in and then suddenly you see a fifth one log up so uh, come up so you're like okay well they're going to go for that sixth i'm going to head straight there yep yeah so it's really interesting to kind of think like what the mindset was because i've definitely seen players who um there will be like no forts lit except for two athena and there's one reaper who goes out just to quench or quench no uh, mm-hmm. i can't think of what it is but raise the the, the reaper flag yeah. for those Snuffed two yeah thank you that's a better way of going and snuffing out <laughs> the the beacon at those two as opposed to going for the other four and yeah real interesting like it's it, it really does kind of push people to be like no, I don't. I, I will do whatever it takes to get you to not win as opposed to me winning the easier way of going to the other ones and having more than you. And mm-hmm. It's a very interesting kind of dynamic watching like the, the beacons changing over the course of a sale and seeing like who goes where and what they're doing, especially with a lot of Reapers raising their Reaper flag. You can actually see them kind of move. And <laughs> I don't know who the Reapers yeah. are that are doing that, but boy, if you guys are trying to be stealthy about getting your beacons lit, uh <laughs> that is don't put the reaper flag up because they're they'll know like where you're going and then just stay one step ahead of you but that's okay if you want to do that too i i appreciate it i'll go i'll go fix all the all the beacons and make sure that they're they're proper um yeah, just just nice of them to signpost what they're doing you know right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not wrong uh awesome well um i've kept you on for a very long time and you're always welcome to come back if you want to talk more. But uh, was there anything else that you wanted to to touch on before we head out? Um, I don't know. Well, I think initially we kind of, I kind of missed the point where I could say about my uh, what I do as a creator. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I kind well, of. Let's, we'll, um, we'll do all the uh, and and if you want, um, I tell you what, because we're recording this right now. If people are listening to this, uh, this is us ending our conversation. Right, pirates that's going to do it for this episode thanks again to joby one for jumping in and spending some time with us to chat about his life his his costumes and his prosthetics his uh props things like that um if you guys have any questions or concerns about where you can get his information head over to the show notes it has all the links for him uh as well as where you can pick up his merch things like that so if you have any questions for me feel free to head over to the discord if you'd like you can always chat with me there or you can send me uh any tweets or messages on uh 
uh, Twitter or email Twitter as long as we have it. Who knows how long that's going to happen? Who knows when it's going to d- disappear or become really bad? And we have to figure out what the heck TikTok is. Uh, but I'm always over on Twitter at CAPT underscore L O G U N or on email at CAPT L O G U N at gmail.com. Links are in the show notes. If you want to support this and you don't want to sign up for Patreon, please consider liking, subscribing, please sharing the content with others, telling a friend about uh, see these podcasts, things like that. If you are a fan, otherwise, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I think that's, I hope you just have a good rest of your week. That's, that's all I can really say. And pirates, that's going to do it for this episode. So thank you. I love you. And I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. My name is Jameson, or Big Cat. And I am Brenna, or Mother Goose. And together, we are the hosts of the DL Weekly Gaming News. Each week, we bring you the top stories from last week, as well as something you might have missed. Our goal is to start a conversation about what's going on in the world of gaming. And every week, we have a special guest join us in the chat room, where we discuss a different gaming-related topic and learn more about our guests in the 60-second download. And if that isn't enough, we also have Slim Jims. So come and hang out with us every week and join in on the conversation. Good luck and have fun, everybody. And remember, keep your goose loose. Hey, Guardians. We are the Destiny Show Podcast, a weekly podcast about all things Destiny 2. We invite amazing guests from the Destiny community to share their stories and discuss the latest topics from the world of Destiny. Check us out on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, or live on Twitch every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We will see you starside.